Press Ctrl C to shut down a program in command prompt. So hi everybody and welcome back to the Bitcoin Day Trade channel. <laughs> and today I'm gonna retry and use BTC Recovery. Well, some people think that it has changed over the time. I don't know. We're gonna check it out today. So what I did was I have pre-created a virtual machine, a Windows virtual machine, and it is clean, which means I haven't installed anything on it. As you can see, Windows is booting. So this is a relatively new Windows installation. It's uh, pretty much empty. I think Control F is for full screen. How do you go to full screen? Host F, right Control F. That was it. We're working in a new Windows. You guess. Let's use Microsoft Edge because everybody loves to use Microsoft Edge. It is the best choice ever. So let's do this. A fast, safe and productive web browser that works for you, apparently. Okay, well, focus. Yeah, I need focus, man. Focus. Continue without syncing. Leave me alone. I just said leave me alone and it's not leaving me alone. So, what do I need? I need google.com. That's my friend. I've never used Edge before. Search for BTC Recover. Hey, look at that. Who's this fella over here? Okay, so whenever you search for BTC Recover, I think it is the first one we're going to use. Yes, this one. This is the GitHub. This is where they keep the most latest version. It hasn't been updated for years, so we're still going to use that same one. I know that within this folder docs, we can find a install.md. And here is everything you need to know for the installation. At this moment, we are working with the Bitcoin Core wallet. So we need PyCrypto and Python 2.7. Okay, we're going to do this to get it. And what else? PyCrypto, PyCrypto. It's mainly PyCrypto and Python 2.7. As you can see in this install.md file, follow everything that it says here for Windows. So follow this trick. Later on, Windows here again. So make sure you do these things. Just follow along. Visit Python download page. Okay, let's go to Python. Open a new tab. Python. I need Python 2.7.18. Okay. And let's download it for Windows. So Windows 64-bit. Scan for viruses. Is it scanning for viruses? Wow, Edge. Living on the edge. Well, usually I only use Edge one time to download Chrome. Come on, stop scanning for viruses. Install for all users. Okay, let's just keep it on Python 2.7 because in all my tutorials, we're always using Python 2.7. So let's not change that. Let's not forget this trick. If you have Python 3 installed, then you have a problem. If you are new to Python, make sure that you add Python exe.path will be installed on the local hard drive. What it does is whenever you type Python in command, it automatically chooses Python uh, 2.7. Has it installed already? Is it working? So if you want to know if it's working, just press here, start, type CMD, open it, and let's go to CD. How does it work? Man, it's been such a while. And by pressing tab, it autofills it for you. If you press dir directory then it shows you the directory and it shows that python is here so if we would type python.exe i expect it to work so now we are inside of python we're not going to use python so just exit Control z plus return to enter exit <laughs> not to enter the exit okay so now we know for sure that python is working that was one of the things then we need to download this btc recover let's open this in a new tab this page the, the main page the btc recover page and just download the code Download it as a zip. It's been saved somewhere. Let's show it in the folder. Extract it to our desktop. Let's do that. Because I like to work on my desktop. I don't know why, but you can do this wherever you want to. But let's just use the desktop. Now we get here a folder. PC Recover Master. Let us first try if the program will run. So what we're going to do is we have to navigate in CMD to this folder. And the way we do that, or the easiest way is just copy whatever is here on your address bar so click in the address bar press ctrl c to copy it go over here type cd space right click with your mouse and press enter and if you type directory dir now you will know for sure that you are in this folder let us check out if it is working so if we chose before adding python to path then we can type python space we have to run this file btc recover so btc press tab the pi enter what's gonna happen okay we get an error but we don't get a wrong error we get an error just telling us that we didn't add any argument let us add the argument help i think it's double dash help enter and as you can see it is basically already working 
but it will not work for every type of wallet. So let us go back to this page, the install page. Let us just continue this list. So what we just did was install Python, first thing. Then we go to PyCrypto. Let's just read what it says. Uh, download and run the PyCrypto 2.6 installer for Python 2.7. It's available over there. Let's hope it is still available. Open it in a new tab. Yes, we still have them available here. So 2.6 for Python 2.7, the 64-bit or either the 32-bit, depending on what you installed yourself. So I need this. Okay, so let's just install this. It's not going to be that hard. Just click next. It's going to be very easy. Let's go back to the installation. I don't even think we have to do this because to do script that's only necessary for a couple of wallets. Let us check it out. Script, we see it here. Hive for OS X. Where else is script? Script for beta. I don't even know what it is. Bitcoin wallet for Android. Blackberry spending pin. So let us just do it anyway because I don't think it's going to be very hard. It's not necessary for everybody. I think that we are already able to to brute force a Bitcoin Core wallet right now. Open a command prompt window and type the following. Well, we already have one open and let us try and do this. What I did was I copied it, copy, go here and right click and then you get it here. What is happening now, it's going to uh, do a Python installation thing. Here we get a, a error. Well, it's not really an error, but it's telling us that it's not going to be updated anymore. And we also have something here. You are using the pip version 19 and you should use number 20. Always read these things. Read it. Don't ignore it. Read everything. Because usually whenever I get questions, it is just because somebody didn't read what it says here. Let us just copy this command and you do that by selecting it and then press enter on your keyboard. And then you see that it's deselected. And now if I right click, it's getting over here. You can also type it. Press enter. And give it some time to update the pip. The pip, the Python installation protocol. I think that's what it's called, pip. Retry this. I don't think it is necessary, but just to make sure that there is nothing different. It's already satisfied, as you see. So, okay, we did that. Download this Lipsodium zip file and extract it to a temporary location. Okay, I think that usually people get in trouble here. <gasps> Page not found. It is the Lipsodium error. So whenever you see this, download Lipsodium here, releases, uh, you click on it, you get an error. Now you're in trouble. At least you think. The thing you do is you go to your address bar, and I'm not sure, but I think if I just remove this and press enter, <laughs> I get a list. Hey, I knew it. What did we need originally? Uh, I think it was the MSVC. Oh, scheisse. I forgot it. It is called the releases Lipsodium 1.0 and it is the msvz.zip. We need this. If we go to this link, it is not working. So make sure you remove this part, the Lipsodium msvz. Remove it, press enter and choose a newer one here. As you can see, number 16 has been removed from this directory. Well, let's just choose 18.msvc.zip. So we need this one. And I expect that we can find the same thing inside this Lipsodium. Just ignore the fact that this is 18 and not 16. It doesn't matter. Let's go back. Even though this is 16, this is supposed to be number 18. So please ignore 16, make sure it is 18. And now you can continue the tutorial as if nothing ever happened. Let's just show it in folder here. Let's extract it to our desktop. We see it here now. And what does this tutorial tell us to do? It tells us to find the correct libsodium.dll file from the extracted files. It will be located at one of these two paths. So depending on the installation style, we did a 64-bit style. So in my case, I search in here. So 64, then it says releases version 141. We're just gonna choose the newest one, the dynamic. And here we see a libsodium.dll. What am I supposed to do? Copy it into your Python folder. Okay, copy it. Let's go to our Python folder, this PC, C drive, Python, and paste it here. Very easy, right? And download and install one of the two update packages below from Microsoft, either the 32-bit or the 64. Same situation. I'm choosing the 64 because I've installed 64-bit. I agree to everything, even though I don't know what I'm agreeing to, but I have no choice. So agree. Setup has been successful. What else do we have here? Oh, we can pip install the protobuf. Let's do the pip install of protobuf. Let's copy it. Go back to your command window. Go over here, right click and press enter. And let's hope it works. Okay, successful install it. And is there another thing? Windows GPU accelerator for Bitcoin Core. 
Well, that's something that we might need. Download the latest version of PyOpenCL for OpenCL 1.2, Python 2.7. Uh, what else? For the best compatibility, make sure you select the right version. PyOpen 1.2 and no later. Okay. Go to this link. Let's check out what it is. PyOpenCL. Let me check. What are we supposed to get? PyOpenCL 2070 1.1 CL12 CP. To seven. Let's keep it next to each other. So we're searching for a 1.1. One one. Uh -huh. Ah, here it is. Even though this is 2018, I think it is smart to keep using whatever they say. We're using Python 2.7. So we have to use one of these down here. So click on it. And now it's downloading it. Show in folder. Okay, here we have it. It says here, open a command prompt window and type this to install the PyOpenCL and its dependencies. As you can see, it says, go to your username and then download. Right click, copy it. Let's go over here, right click. Well, as you see, this here means that you're going to your user profile. That means literally this part of the directory. But we're going to the folder downloads and if I press directory, we will see everything that we just downloaded. You see, Beats Recover Master, Lipsodium, and we see this newly downloaded file. That's the file that we're gonna use. Okay, and it says, use the pip install. As you can see here, go to Python 2.7, scripts, pip install, and then we're gonna use that file to pip install stuff. Let's copy this, go here, right click, press enter, and could not install package from environment, no such directory. Oh, why is it saying something like that? So we get an error here. What we can do to make it easier for ourselves is just copy this uh, newly downloaded file. So copy it and let's go to this folder over here. So this, this script folder here, press copy. Let's go over here, type CD space, right click. Let's go to the Python folder scripts. Let's check out the directory. Do we have pip.exe? Yes, we have it. So like I said, copy this file and send it to that folder. So go to your C drive, Python scripts, and let's paste it here. So make sure it is next to each other. And now we are just going to try this command that we see over here. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm so stupid, stupid. I forgot. I don't know if you noticed what happened, but here it is telling us to use PyOpenCL 2017, but in reality we downloaded number 80. That is not a problem. Let us run it from this directory. So what we have to do is run pip as it says here and install whatever is here. So we're going to run this file and use that one on it. So let us first check the directory if it is here. Yes, now it is here. We copied it over here and now we're going to do that. pip install and then Pi open and press tab to autofill and then press enter. And now it should work. As you can see, now it is working. Much is better. Us. And what is it doing? It apparently has a list full of dependencies. And these are all dependencies that are needed to have your GPU used uh, by the program BTC Recover. And apparently it's done. PyCrypto is also recommended. Do we already have PyCrypto installed? We already installed PyCrypto. Noise, very noise. So now we, we're all set. We, we have the fastest possibility for brute forcing uh, with your GPU on a oh, Bitcoin Core wallet. Hey, it still works apparently. You just have to do the tutorial. Hey, hope you guys did enjoy it. We did it. It was a lot easier than I thought, to be honest.